guys, it's Sam with Southsider Worship, back at you with another video. Today we're going to be talking about uh, my bass rig that I play uh, with Southsider Worship. Uh, this is also the rig that we use for recording as well. Um, so first I want to talk about source tone because source tone is very important. Uh, the sound that's coming from your guitar is what's going to make uh, your guitar tone the best or bass tone. Uh, so first I have here is a made in Japan jazz bass uh, Fender with some upgraded pickups. Um, and some tone pots as well. That's not super important, but it's very nice to have very clean tone pots so there's no scratching or humming when you're uh, turning the volume up and down. Along with my jazz bass, I also have a uh, Fender P bass. Uh, this is a special Red Warren edition, Mike Dirt uh, special edition. Uh, this is great because it has the 60s cu custom shop uh, P bass pickups. Um, another great thing is it just looks really cool, super Red Warren. Uh, gives you that nice uh, vintage finish and if you ever ding it, you don't feel bad about hitting it. Um, I love the way this guitar plays. The neck's a little thick for my liking, but it's a bass guitar, so what are you going to do about it? So out of my guitar, it runs first into my volume pedal. And this is just a normal Ernie Ball volume pedal. Uh, it's very, very simple. It just has a string and it goes up and down, going up and down. It's not necessary to have, but it's nice to have. Uh, not necessarily for swells, but if you want a tune or anything, it's great to have the tuner always on, uh, especially for bass. The next thing it goes to out of the volume pedal is it goes into the bass mono synth pedal. Um, and I'll play a little bit of what that sounds like. So here's our source tone, first of all. Uh, this is just... Uh, raw straight to the amp and we'll get to the amp later. So that's our raw tone straight into the amp. Uh, this is what it sounds like with the bass mono synth. So it's great uh, for certain things, especially when you're playing in a worship setting, uh, to have, let's say you don't want to switch from playing guitar to playing a synth bass or anything. It's great to have a pedal that just does that for you in some of the more uh, like a quiet bridge or a quiet chorus coming out. Obviously I haven't turned up loud right now, but uh, normally I have it as a little bit quieter volume. Uh, so that's really just in the background of that. The next thing it comes out of is it comes out of this uh, the mono synth and it goes into the pog, and this is just for um, some uh, mainly sub octave, but there is a little bit of octave up, and this is what gives us our drive tone. Uh, so when we're playing stuff like this. is great because it makes your bass guitar sit a little bit higher in the mix and it's great because it makes it work better with other guitar players um, because a lot of churches you know you only have one guitar player and so the bass guitar needs to be bass guitar but also work with the other guitars um, the next thing out of the micro pog is it goes to the uh, dark glass micro tubes vintage micro tubes this is my favorite pedal on the board. It's a vintage distortion and it has four knobs on it. Uh, volume out, drive, your era. So the era knob turned more to the right, uh, gives it more of a uh, pop punk bass feel, uh, 90s, 2000s, and more to the left is more Van Halen, Rush, that type of uh, distortion. And then you have your blend knob between your dry and your, uh, your distorted single. So this is what it sounds like. distortion pedal I love it um, out of the distortion pedal it next goes to the compressor and this is just a compressor that limits cuts off peaks and levels it out for front of house and for the amp 
Um, so this is great because I can play as hard as I want. I can hit the strings super hard and this compressor catch it so it makes front of house job a little bit easier. Um, next it goes from the compressor pedal to the amp. And uh, this is a 2000s SVT Classic amp, uh, all tube preamp, uh, AX7s and A7Xs, um, and then to a 15 inch cab. Uh, this combo works great when you're playing outside. I don't normally mic the cab, I usually just run the direct out XLR straight on the back, which is what you're hearing today. Uh, but here are my settings for it. Uh, I have the gain turned up pretty good so that the preamp tubes are working. I have both the ultra high and ultra low buttons not pressed in. Cutting a little bass, cutting a little bit of low mids, boosting the treble a little bit, and then I have my master volume around two or three. Um, because the master volume doesn't matter as much because it's just going to the cab backstage uh, because you have to have it plugged in or you'll ruin your tube amp but we're just using the preamp section, so the most important knob is actually the gain knob and uh, not anything else in, uh, not the master volume. Um, so here's some of the combinations that I use when I'm playing. Uh, a lot of the combinations I use is the distortion and the pog on at the same time, and I'll play what this sounds like. So here's our raw tone. Here's the most of them for a big bridge or something. Just to recap today, uh, just it's source tone, importantly from the bass first and foremost, where to spend your money. Secondly, a few different pedals, uh, mainly overdrive and compression are the ones you want to worry about, and then obviously a good preamp before the board. Uh, this preamp doesn't necessarily have to be a tube amp, it could be something different like uh, Aguar Tome Hammer or Ampeg, they make a pedal, uh, Sans Amp, anything, but really just something to give a good preamp signal before the front of house board or before you're recording. Oh,